Are you here to improve your investment strategies? Are you looking for that one article that could help you finalize that decision you were holding off? Well then, get ready to learn more and gain just that subtle extra knowledge to get an edge in the investment business. Because if you're new here, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to The Daily Fortune, a channel where we talk about all the latest news, updates, guides, and strategies related to investment. Of course, with that said, we're going to be discussing a lot about the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, The Big Short, Michael Burry, The Money Tree, Kathy Woods, Tesla's very own CEO and eccentric billionaire, Elon Musk, along with the rest of the big leagues to learn just a bit more from the professionals. And don't worry, of course we talk about crypto, and we also talk about the best stocks to invest in, along with many tips and tricks on how to handle your finances so you never lose. So before we talk about making money, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell as well to make sure you won't miss a single video. Now let's get started! Are you seeing signs of inflation beginning to increase? We're seeing very substantial inflation. It's very interesting. I mean, it, it, we're raising prices. People are raising prices to us. It's being accepted. I mean, it's not. In this video, we'll talk about inflation. Inflation is a major concern for everyone right now, including all individuals, businesses, investors, and politicians. Inflation has been a big issue and topic of discussion for the last year to 18 months. We will also go over a hierarchy of different investing categories and how they rank during inflationary periods. Warren Buffett, the famous 91 year old investor, knows a lot about inflation because he has lived through it. Cash is the worst investment to make during an inflationary period. Warren Buffett isn't the only investor who dislikes holding cash during inflation. Fellow billionaire Ray Dalio has also been vocal about his dislike of cash, using the catchphrase, cash is trash. It's because during times of inflation, cash sitting in a savings account or in one of the cabinets in your house becomes less valuable by the day, week, month, or even year. One of the most important lessons you could get by watching this video is that as an investor, you need to consider your investment returns and what is called the real returns. There is a simple math in calculating the real return on investment. Here's an example. Let's say your investments return 10% per year, and that's fantastic, right? But no, you may be wrong because it all depends on the inflation rate. To calculate the real return on your investments, you must deduct the impact of inflation. As a result, if inflation is 7% and your investment return is 10% that year, your real return is only 3%. This is the reason why cash is at the bottom of the hierarchy because the return on cash is basically zero. Holding cash for an extended period of time allows inflation to affect you big time. Fixed interest rate bonds are arranged above cash in the hierarchy. These investments are generally regarded as very safe by conventional investing wisdom. But Buffett would argue that they aren't all that safe when inflation is taken into account. Here's a simple explanation to what I'm talking about. As of the making of this video, the current yield on a 10-year US government bond is around 1.8%. So this indicates that if you buy a 10-year government bond today, you'll effectively lock in a 1.8% annual return for the next decade. Let's Let's assume inflation averages 4% over the next decade, which isn't a bit of a challenge given that the most recent inflation report showed inflation at 7%. With 4% inflation, you would have a negative 2.2% annual return after accounting for the impact of inflation on your return. This is still preferable to simply holding cash, but it is still far from the best. You know, if, if, we, if, we dropped, if we dropped the million dollars of cash into every household in the United States today, everybody would feel very good except the people that invested in things that were denominated in dollars. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's important to remember that people who own fixed rate debt, such as government bonds, suffer losses during periods of inflation. People who borrow money in a long-term structure at a fixed rate, on the other hand, benefit from inflation. People who use a mortgage to purchase a home are an example of this. For example, you bought a house in December 2020. You were able to lock in a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 2.8%. This means that your interest rate will remain unchanged for the next 30 years. Your mortgage payment will also remain the same for the next 30 years. That's a good place to be in during times of inflation because inflation eats away at the value of the mortgage debt month after month and year after year. As inflation reduces the purchasing power of each dollar, you are able to repay your mortgage debt with devalued dollars. If you own a home though with a very large mortgage and you have incredible inflation, it wipes out the mortgage. 
and you've still got the home. I mean, there, it just... It, in it, Weimar, Germany, they gave you the mortgage back at the end. Buffett refers to unproductive assets as the next level up on this hierarchy. These include precious metals such as gold, silver, and platinum. These aren't terrible to own during an inflationary period because all else being equal, as the price of everything else rises, these things should, in theory, keep up with inflation. But even so, these unproductive assets are unlikely to increase your purchasing power. Let's hear it from a short clip of Warren Buffett explaining this. I, w I will say this about gold. Uh, if you took all of the gold in the world, it would, f it would roughly make a cube 67 feet on a side. So if you took all the gold in the world, we could have a cube that went down there 67 feet, uh -huh. 67 feet high, and that would be the whole thing. Now for that same cube of gold, it would be worth at today's market prices about seven trillion dollars. That's probably about a third of the value of all the stocks in the United States. So you could have a choice of owning a third of all the stocks in the United States, or you could have a choice of owning that little block of gold, which can't do anything but kind of shine there and make you feel like Midas or Croesus or something of the sort. Now, for seven trillion dollars, there are roughly a billion far acres of farmland in the United States. They're valued at about two and a half trillion dollars. It's about half the continental of the United States is farmland. Uh, you could have all the farmland in the United States. You could have about seven Exxon Mobiles, and you could have a trillion dollars of walking around money. And if you offered me the choice of looking at some 67 foot uh, cube of gold and looking at it all day, you know, and maybe <laughs> touching it, fond fondling it occasionally, you know, and then saying, you know, do something for me. And it says, I don't do anything. I just stand here and look pretty. And, and, and the alternative to that was to have all the farmland of the country, everything, cotton, corn, soybeans, seven Exxon Mobiles, just think of that, add a trillion dollars of walking around money. I, I, you know, maybe call me crazy, but I'll, I'll take the farmland and the Exxon Mobiles. <laughs> Moving on to the next investment category in our inflation hierarchy, these investors want investments that can outperform and produce a real return, not just keep up with inflation. This is where Warren Buffett's concept of productive assets come into play. We all know who Warren is, right? If not, Buffett has made this fortune by purchasing stocks and entire businesses, but not all businesses are created equal, according to him. The average business Business productive assets are next in the inflation's hierarchy. Average businesses have a few characteristics, one of which is that they require a lot of additional capital, which is just a fancy name for cash to keep running. Unfortunately, uh, most businesses do, will not come out well in real terms during inflation. Their earnings may go up a fair amount over time, but they're compelled to put more and more dollars into the business just to stay in the same place. and. Uh, you know, the worst kind of a business uh, is one that makes you put more money on the table all the time and doesn't give you uh, greater earnings. So, so here's a simple example based on a real company that should demonstrate the main idea. The world's largest equipment rental company is United Rentals, ticker symbol URI. They have a simple and direct business model. United Rentals purchases construction equipment such as bulldozers, portable restrooms, and heavy-duty trucks. United Rentals then rents out those equipment to construction projects for a short period of time for the duration of the project. So the equipment rented by United Rentals to its customers does not last forever and must be replaced every few years. To understand it clearly, let's assume that each bulldozer purchased by the company costs $1 million and that over the life of that bulldozer, it can be rented out to customers to create $1.2 million in sales for the firm. That's a $200,000 profit. But just for example, suppose inflation is 20%. This implies that the next time the firm will go to buy another bulldozer to replace the existing one, they would have to spend one $1.2 million. Do you see what's going on here? The firm isn't able to take any money from the business in the form of profits. All profits earned by United Rentals must be reinvested back into the business in order to purchase new equipment to replace the old ones. However, this example shows the difficulty that capital-intensive businesses encounter during times of inflation. Before we move on to the next characteristic of businesses to avoid during inflation, Warren Buffett's partner and friend, Charlie Munger, had this quote that pretty much sums up what I've just discussed. 
The next type of average business that you should avoid is one that lacks what is known as pricing power. The best way to explain the companies that lack pricing power is to discuss a company that does not have pricing power. So when I think of pricing power, the first company that comes to my mind is Apple. Apple has such a loyal customer base that many of them are willing to pay whatever the firm intends for its iPhone product. If someone wants a new iPhone, they won't buy a competitor's product not simply because it's less expensive. Compare this to a company with little to no pricing power, where the customer is primarily concerned with price. Assume that a company only produces plain white t-shirts. There's no design for that or any brand, because someone will simply buy the cheapest white t-shirt they can find. This company has no pricing power. This t-shirt manufacturer also lacks the ability to raise prices higher than its competitors because if prices are raised higher than competitors, people will simply buy the white t-shirts of this company's competitors. This company will struggle in an inflationary environment. The cost of raw materials to make the shirts is rising, and so is the cost of paying workers to make the shirts, and the cost of shipping the shirts to customers. The only thing that isn't rising is the company's ability to raise the price for the shirts. Do you now understand why inflation is so difficult for businesses that lack pricing power? Let's move on to the next investment category in the hierarchy, which we'll call Productive Assets Great Businesses. And here's another example. Do you still remember how in the previous example we had, the company that spent a million dollars on a bulldozer? Now let's say that our friend Steve here spends the same one million dollars developing a software product that makes it easier for YouTube creators to make and edit videos. Like in the previous example, suppose Steve earns 1.2 million dollars from that product in his first year. A profit of $200,000 is fantastic, but wait, it gets much better. Assume there's also 20% inflation in this example, which means Steve can charge 20% more for his software this year than the last. This means that the $1.2 million in sales that Steve had last year would turn into $1.44 million due to the 20% inflation. But the good news about this software business is that he doesn't have to reinvest any more money into it. He already has the software, and while he may have to spend some money improving and maintaining it, it will be minimal. This is the exact opposite of the previous example's capital intensive business. Steve's software business would be a capital light business because the amount of cash Steve will have to keep reinvesting in a business just to keep the operations and product of the business running is very small. This indicates that instead of constantly reinvesting profits back into the business, as in the previous example of the equipment rental company, Steve can actually take his profits out of the business. To find a business that performs well during inflation, look for the total opposite of the mediocre businesses that we discussed earlier. You really would like to find a business that requires little capital. There are businesses that do not need to constantly reinvest large sums of money in order to grow. These are frequently businesses with very strong brands. Apple, Coca-Cola, and Buffett's own sea candies are examples of such companies. Other types of businesses with low capital requirements include those that do not depend on owning a large number of physical assets, such as factories or physical inventory. Consider Microsoft, Facebook, and other technology-focused companies. Almost any software company falls into this category because unlike most businesses, once the software is created and the money is spent on building it, the reinvestment back into the business is minimal. Pricing power is another important aspect of a company to own during times of inflation. And here are some things to consider. One exercise that I believe is beneficial is to imagine how a customer would react if the company raised its prices by 10%. Customers' reactions would range from, I don't care about the price hike, take my money please, to, no way, I would definitely not be paying that, when prices are rising due to inflation. You want to own stock in companies that can easily raise their prices for their goods. You should avoid investing in companies in commoditized industries that have difficulty raising prices even in normal times. And so there you have it. But first, let me share a summary of Warren Buffett's important advice to every investor. Um, and, you know, the best investment at all, of all, I mean, if you're the leading brain surgeon in town or the leading lawyer in town or the whatever it may be, you don't have to keep re-educating yourself to be that in current terms. You bought your expertise when you went to medical school or, or law school in old dollars and you don't have to keep reinvesting. Uh, and you retain your earning power in current dollars. Investing in yourself is the best way to protect against inflation. If you're the best at what you do, whether you're a mechanic, a lawyer, an engineer, or a plumber, you have to make yourself extremely valuable to others. The advantage of being highly valued in a marketplace economy is that you can charge whatever you want for your services and your customers will gladly pay for it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. 
So that's it for today. I hope you learned something from today's video. And to get updated with the next videos, don't forget to hit the notification bell. See you next time. Thank you.